What are you listening to? Oh, it's W-I-D-R Kalamazoo. Welcome on back, folks, to 89.1 Wider FM, W-I-D-R Kalamazoo. You're tuned in to Keeping In Touch, the show on 89.1 Wider FM, and to keep you in touch with all the beautiful DJs out for the summer. And uh, we have a very, very special guest. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself today for us? Hello. I am Logan Last Name, the program director at 89.1 Wider FM. As well as the host of what show? I host The Void. And um, that is what time for this for this current um I guess, is this going to be for summer or is it changing up in the fall? No, I'm going to keep with this time slot. So it is different from the fall and spring semester last year. But we are currently on Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m. 3 to 4 p.m. And and Logan, for the people tuning in, describe the void if they haven't if they haven't uh, like checked it out. Ooh, well, The Void is a show that I run by myself, and I guess the goal of it is to expose listeners to more underrepresented artists. A lot of music that I play is local and comes straight out of Kalamazoo, but at the same time, I try to find artists that don't have many listeners, and typically they're ones that I haven't heard before either. So then I put that all together, and I like to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, some fun facts about the songs I'm playing in between. Yeah. Um, But yeah, overall, I would say that The Void is just a safe space for people to experience their feelings and get to know good music that maybe they haven't heard before. Mm, mm, mm. One more time, shout out what time to catch The Void this summer and fall. Yes, tune into The Void with Logan Last Name every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. 3 to 4 p.m. And I was tuning in, shoot, it was, what is today of recording the Sunday? I was tuned in last Thursday, and um, you jump scared me. I opened the app, and I just heard, you're tuned in to The Void by Logan. I, I, I was so happy to, to hear it back on air, so um, great stuff. And uh, if you haven't been tuned Thank in, you. yeah, I'm I'm gotcha. happy to be back on air. There, there was a couple months there that I wasn't able to be in the station, and I missed it dearly. Mm, mm, mm. Why don't we get right into it, Logan? You have some, I guess you got a big story to tell uh, for over summer. The reason you couldn't do the void is why. Well, more or less, it it is a pretty good story. I spent uh, the months of May and June in Ecuador, which is in South America. Uh, in sorry, I heard a noise. <laughs> uh, in South America, and I was there studying abroad for my Spanish minor. Sweet, yeah. I mean, you said it was May to June, but it, it honestly felt it felt like a while. It did. No, I agree. I know. When I was there about halfway through, I was kind of blown away that I still had a month left to go and it just felt like I had already been there for so long. But pretty much right after that tipping point, the time just flew by and before I knew it, I was on my plane back to Michigan. Oh, with a frown on the face, huh? Away from paradise. (laughs) Man, just... A lot of retrospection on the way back, that's for sure. Oh, I could imagine. I, I'm, I'm sure you had a fun time, huh? Oh, it was incredible. I learned so much, and I got to experience so much of the food and the culture and the music there. Ooh. I got to travel a little bit within the country, and it's just something that I, I wouldn't trade for anything. I'm so grateful I got to go. Hey, beautiful. And, and this was Ecuador's again, right? Out to, out to yes. Ecuador. And I remember you showing me on a Discord call 
a um a, a window from the place you were staying at, and I mean the view from that. Oh my goodness. Why don't you give a little description of what that looked like? Oh my gosh. Well, first things first, I had the opportunity to stay with a host mom. And it was just her and I there, so we developed a really close relationship. But any expectations that I had going into the trip um, were just blown away in the most positive sense possible. Um, She lived in a really nice place that I got to share with her while I was there. And the view from her balcony was honestly breathtaking. There was mountains in the background, and below in, I guess, a valley, you could say, was just little specks of buildings. And it was it was something else to be able to walk out and see that every morning. It, it truly looked like um, a movie scene. It, re- it really did. I know. I, I would always say to, I guess, whenever visitors came that it looked like a painting. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you took plenty of pictures from from there. Oh, absolutely. I actually do this thing, I guess a hobby of mine is making video montages after like certain vacations or I guess like a summer, something mm-hmm. like that. And I realized I had taken 500 videos while I was in Ecuador. Yo, you have a whole like terabyte hard drive just filled up with the Ecuador label on it, huh? No, I I actually had to pay for more storage. It's kind of insane. Hey, well, those memories, uh, they last a lifetime, don't they? No, absolutely. I, I, I don't mind it at all, and I'm really glad that I have them preserved, at least, outside of my memory. Hey, for sure, you're, you're definitely going to look back at, and smile at those good times. Especially, I don't know, memories seem to fade after some time, so it's nice to have those uh, to go and look back on. No, yeah, exactly. I mean, shoot, I remember when we went to uh, the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Conference in New York. You had the, um, shoot, the Kodak, like, um, what do they call those? What kind of cameras? Oh, yeah, disposable camera. Oh, the disposable, yeah. Oh, how fun. And those pictures are, I mean, like, you really should take up some photography uh, something, some side hobby or side gig or whatever. That was that was great. I, I love seeing those pictures after. No, that was so fun. I unfortunately didn't bring a disposable camera with me um, for my study abroad just because I had to, like, go on a plane and stuff and... I don't know, those are those things are expensive these days, but I do remember taking photos in New York. That that was really awesome. I know, especially because it was the first time for most of us. Yeah, shoot, and I think those are on your gram and they, they turned out great. That was fun. That was really dope. And I'm sure you took so many of Ecuador though. Like I I'd be I'm not a picture taker, but I would be flashing flashing my iPhone or whatnot. I that'd be so crazy. I'm sure you saw that. Any, anything that like really blew you away or, or anything that sticks out fondly? Well, whenever someone asks me what my favorite part was, I've kind of been drawing back to this one activity that I did with a few people from my group uh, the last weekend before we headed back okay. to the U.S. Um, it was a weekend tour of the Amazon. No way. That was, I was speechless. And I guess a specific part of it, other than, you know, being able to do some hikes and uh, spend some time on the Napo River, was this, I guess, tour of a cave that we did. It was called the Umanti Cave. Mm, Interesting. And yeah, in the past, I had always told, I guess, any friend or family that, you know, going into a cave with enclosed walls and being underground, like, that's that's not it for me. That's not my style. <laughs> Too claustrophobic or what? <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. I don't know. I guess it just didn't seem like something I would enjoy. But it ended up being kind of like a detour that we did on our way there. And we got to go swimming inside. Inside we the cave? We got to see some really cool formations. And that was just 
probably the most amazing thing that I did there because it just proved to me that, you know, things aren't always what they seem, right? Hey, uh, so let me get this straight. You went swimming in a cave. I did. I did. It was it was what? crazy, Ryan. Like, Dude, that sounds like a video game or something. Uh, like, it was- honestly, it it really did not feel real. I don't know how <laughs> we even got into that situation because, like I said, it was not on the itinerary. Was the water cold or like? I would say it was like the temperature of a pool. So it wasn't freezing, but it wasn't like a hot spring or anything, you know? Oh, jeez. Hey, I, I I couldn't imagine. And, and I, you got to show me where that is. I got to sign myself up for that. I That's got to be something I do one time in my little bucket list type deal. <laughs> no, absolutely. I would recommend for anyone to go to Ecuador 100%. So you said it's not something that you typically thought you would enjoy, but you end up loving it, huh? Yeah. Great. Was yep. was there anyone else who uh, got a little freaked out in the cave or anything? <laughs> well, I went with two friends that were in our group from WMU. Okay. And one of them was wearing jeans because we didn't know we were going to be... I guess hiking through water Interesting, and the other yeah. one she's actually slipped into the water and um, I don't even know just went she down was fine and everything but <laughs> it was just a crazy experience they actually the tour guide at one point had us all turn off our headlamps and we sat in the dark oh. for a few minutes and I I just had to hold on to their hands because yeah I, was, I knew I was gonna be floating away if not that's crazy. I was going to ask, like, was there, like, natural light in the cave? Or did you have, like, you obviously had to use flashlights? Yeah, we all had headlamps that were provided. And then we also rented rubber boots. But unless we were near the entrance or the exit, there was no other light. Bro, that's crazy. I would be, I'd kind of be freaking out, maybe. I, that ain't me, for real. No, I, I had to compose myself a couple of times, I won't lie. <laughs> just like sit down and meditate for a second. <laughs> yeah, just just take a few deep breaths and oh. telling myself, like, we're in a group, like, they do this all the time, it'll they, be okay, you know? Like, this is a tour guide, it's a professional. <laughs> right, I <laughs> know. Oh. No, exactly. Jeez, jeez. Well, hey, that sounds like a blast. Um, so the Amazon trip, the cave exploration... The, the beautiful Ecuadorian city of like the view the view from the apartment again that was that's a crazy view any yeah, other yeah, parts I, the, I what did you say no, I was gonna say any other parts about the trip that that really blew you away or are you uh, is worth mentioning well I would say that a couple of weeks before I went to the Amazon, a friend of mine was really trying to get some people to go hike a volcano with her. What? And I mean, I'm not a super experienced hiker, but, you know, I, I used to run and I, I like to go on walks and things mm-hmm. like that. So I decided to sign up with her and another friend came with us and we hiked a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember seeing on our packing list before we came that if, if you're going to go to this specific volcano was called Cotopaxi. And Ooh. if you were going to go, you had to bring like, long pants and long sleeves and hiking boots and a hat and gloves. And oh. I was kind of confused because Ecuador, it, it means equator in English. It's on the equator. So I didn't really think there was going to be any colder weather while I was there. But I totally understood why once we got there, (laughs) because we were at such a high elevation that there was snow and ice blowing at us. No. And we hiked straight uphill, straight uphill. And again, my brain's confused as well. This is a volcano you're climbing, right? Yes. A snowy volcano on the equator yeah it does it really it sounds like i just made it all up (laughs) 
Oh, nature's nature's wonderful, isn't it, Logan? <laughs> oh, I I could not agree more. Oh, that. My. Oh my gosh. That is so. It was another instance where I was really challenged, but it just was such a euphoric feeling by the end of it, knowing that I had completed that, and I have the ability to say that I hiked on a volcano. Yo, good, hey, good for you. I again, uh, that's a that's a lot of work. I can imagine it's like halfway up. You're like, I maybe turn around or something. Um, no, I I considered it basically at the beginning. But then I <laughs> Once just, you saw I had the to mountain, then you're like, this a, it's a literal mountain, not a volcano. <laughs> well, we we get the bus, and I had bought a hat with like the name Cotopaxi on it before we actually got up to the, where we were going to be hiking. In probably 30 seconds after I got off the bus, my hat blew away and was never to be seen oh again. Oh my good, like a like a baseball cap. Yeah. Oh yeah, got you. That's that's a that's if like that the, just gives you an idea of the wind. That's like fate telling you like this is not this is like, just just stop. <laughs> Right, like, yeah, this is way more serious than you realized, Logan. Jeez, well, um, again, self-gratifying, right? Hey, I did this. I conquered. I conquered it. Man, yeah. Especially, like, if you consider at higher altitudes, there's less oxygen for you to breathe. Oh, yeah. So that was, like, probably the biggest challenge outside of the weather. Trying to suck some breath down or whatever, and it's just still got, like, half a mountain to climb. <laughs> Right. Oh my gosh. Jeez. And also, it was only like just over half a mile up that we went. So it wasn't even that far. And like our tour guide had us take breaks three times on the way up the mountain. Or volcano, I guess. But yeah. Hey, well, um, you're, you're alive to tell the story, huh? I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm gl- grateful for the experiences. I'm also glad to be back in Kalamazoo. Word up. And you got back right around, when was it, end of June? Yeah, right before 4th of July. Sweet. Any any fun stuff going on for you back, uh, back home, Logan, over summer? Well, as of right now, I'm taking one more class for the summer two semester. I've been back at the radio station at Wider, yeah. which... It's just been super great. We're preparing for a big move right now, so... A lot. Definitely a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. But but outside of that, just, like, spending time with my family. I moved into an apartment, a new apartment with my younger sister. And, yeah, life's good. Just enjoying the weather. Getting ready for that fall semester, huh? It's coming quick. I know. Yeah, we were just saying... Just over two weeks from now is the first day of classes. Yeah, it is coming quick. Almost like, where did August go? <laughs> We're already halfway yeah. through. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I know. It's crazy. Yeah, with summer wrapping up, I mean, shoot, I, I keep thinking about yesterday being at Vintage in the Zoo about how, how that's that was a great uh, a little summer experience to be able to do and, and hopefully keep doing some of that. No, definitely. Events like those, they just, they make you so appreciative of like community and weather. And it was just, it was the perfect environment yesterday downtown. Oh, truly. Yeah. Do you want to just let the people know what we were up to? Yeah. So Wider went out to Vintage in the Zoo yesterday in downtown Kalamazoo. Um, There was a few of us directors there as well as DJ Dan Steely, as well as Delta Venus and Jed Robertson, DJ Cavalier. Um, we were all there. We were just promoting wider. The DJs were spinning some vinyl music to kind of go with the vintage vibe. And yeah, we were doing some promotional content, which was super fun, giving away some stickers. Yeah, any thoughts on, on being out there chatting with the community, hearing those hearing those crisp voices and and all those um thoughts from trivial questions yeah i (laughs) yeah i loved it honestly i haven't really i guess technically interviewed anyone before and so that was just 
a really cool thing to get to do, just to kind of interact with new people, um, get an idea of different perspectives, and yeah, I'm really excited for the next one. Yeah, that that was so. You've never really done any any kind of like media coverage or stuff like that before. Honestly, no, not that I can think of. Yeah, I mean, so uh, I'm 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 trying to think like when like when maybe like tabling it maybe a little bit but that was completely different did you enjoy it right no i i loved it honestly like i think here and there going to different community events um and things like that like i think i've been interviewed a few times or Mm -hmm. at least been in the vicinity of things like that but being able to actually ask the questions and and make the interviewee feel comfortable that was that was really special so we asked what two questions yesterday what is music and what is kalamazoo did you have any uh any favorite answers from from yesterday well of course you gotta love the very almost sarcastic and just i don't know what's the word um just like the actual definition of someone being like, well, Kalamazoo is a city or music is what we're listening to right now. <laughs> like, I love it. it is so funny. It is. It is really funny because there, there's such a wide array of answers where some people will kind of give you the most basic <laughs> definition that they can. While some people will go on and be like, Music is light, music is love, music is these universal vibrations that mess with our brain. And like, I I loved all the answers though, honestly. It's truly a wide array of answers and and that's why we out there. And you ran, hey, we were busy all day long, right? No, absolutely. There was people coming up. Um, We had a nice big sign that was kind of attracting people, I think, as well as just our warm energy. Yeah, we were were being loud, real loud out there. Yeah, we we talked to every different kind of person, though, I feel like. We we got a couple kids. Um, Yeah, just all ages, everything like that. Yeah, I I was editing last night, and I think in total we have 60 new skits for the people tuning in. Wow. As oh my w- gosh, I haven't heard that number yet. That's so awesome. Yeah, 60 new skits, just about 30 of each. So we got 30 what is musics and, and 30 what is kazus. That's perfect. As well as three premium Vintage in the Zoo interviews. Oh, yes. So that's fun stuff. I, I'm, I'm hoping to, to bring more of those to y'all. For sure. I'm excited to hear them. Hey. Word up, Bert. Well, I'll get them out to y'all soon, and we'll hopefully get them up on air. <clears throat> All right, Logan, are you um you excited for anything coming this fall? Well, I mean, wider related, we've got our move to the new student center, so that's a huge thing that I'm really looking forward to, just to see how things will change. But things will stay the same, how, how many new students we can get involved. That's definitely a big thing for sure. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be com- that'll change the game. Completely change the game. Yeah, for sure. I think it'll be really cool. And the new the new student center is awesome. So that'll just be a really fun endeavor this fall. But yeah, outside of that, I guess I'm honestly just really looking forward to my new classes and got a couple concerts coming up so yeah i don't know it's all just exciting things looking forward to do all of it hey you know it plus you will be locked in each thursday three to four for what for the void hey so um Excited to get everybody back in, get the shows loaded up. I mean, you've been you've been rewriting the the training and like all program for eighty nine point one wider FM. 
so I know you're excited yeah, to get that all... going. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, you're good. I, I, you sound excited to jump right in. You run it. Yeah, no, we we have a lot of changes coming, but they're good changes. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm excited. I know you are. And again, why don't you let the people one more time your show, when to catch it, what they're tuning into, and why they need to tune into it. Oh, all right, folks. If you don't have anything going on on Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m., you might want to tune in to 89.1 Wider FM for The Void with Logan Last Name. And you should tune in because... If you're looking for new music to add to your playlist or you want to dig into the local scene a little bit more, I've got you covered and we can become, I guess, virtual buddies doing so. (laughs) Radio pals. Get you a radio pal. Radio pals. Exactly. (laughs) Beautiful stuff. And um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for this fall and you got to tune into the void. Yes, yes. Big stuff coming, for yeah. sure. Sweet, sweet. Well, Logan, thank you for being a guest today on Keeping in Touch, the show here on 89.1 Wider FM, meant to keep you in touch with all the beautiful DJs gone for the summer, but returning in the fall, letting you know what they've been up to over summer ski. But today we are wrapping up Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy. And you keep on listening. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Oh, oh of course, Logan. Yeah, you've got to get Logan on. I'm so glad you reached <laughs> out because um, we definitely had to get you on. So appreciate that. No, of course. I love what you've been doing. Hey, well, let's, let's keep on rocking it here on 89.1 Wider FM, folks. Bye-bye. Bye.